Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where we just finished up our return trip from Gilly and I feel like we don't really have anything else that we want to do here for the moment. I mean, we have other plans for this campaign, of course, but let's see what we've got available here. Explore Eve. I think we'll pass on that one. Plant a flag on Gilly. We'll pass on that. We just did this. A lot of Gilly focus here. Okay. Yeah, these are probably not what we're going to go for. We do need to go back to Moon and Minmus. You know what? We could try to do that combined Moon Minmus run. I didn't actually mean to go into the tracking station here. <laughs> we'll leave that facility. We could do the combined Moon Minmus run. We'll have plenty of Delta V to do that with our with our Gilly Lander, I'm sure. So, let's hop in over here. We should actually take stock of what we need in our science facilities on Moon and Minmus. What do we actually need there? So let's hop over to those and take a quick look. So I guess I was right. We do want the tracking station. <laughs> so over at Minmus, or actually, let's check Moon first. We'll fly this. Okay. Fly is a uh, loose term here. <laughs> What do we got going on here? Oh, and we need to transport, or rather transfer data back from our science stations over Moon and Minmus as well. So we currently have a experiment control station. I should actually, let me open up Notepad here, and I want to list down what we've actually got here. So we've currently got a Guob, we've got an experiment control station, we've got a seismometer, seismometer close enough it doesn't have to be spelled correctly control station uh, we've got two power generators which are each generating i believe two power three power and two power so we've got five power how much spare power do we have that's actually the more important question we've, we've got two spare power so two spare power we do have comms and that's, I think, it, right? Let's see. Guab, control, seismometer, two spare power, and comms. Okay, so that's fine. And that's what we've got on... Was that Moon or Minmus? I'm pretty sure that was Moon. <laughs> I'm fairly certain that that was Moon. So we definitely need the ionographer there, that's for sure. So, let's head on over to Minmus then. And, yeah, that would have been this one, I'm pretty sure. So, we'll fly, quote-unquote, fly this one. And at Minmus, we've got what? Because we need to figure out what we need here. So, we've got basically the exact same setup here. It's literally the exact same setup. Okay, that's good to know. Let's head back to the Space Center again. So we now know what is at each of these. And we'll see what we need to bring. But first, I want to hop over to our space stations and get the science transmitted that is probably complete there by now. I, I think that we're going to be done there. So we're going to head to the Moon Science Station. And we'll go ahead and fly that. We should be able to transmit this science at this point. Right. <laughs> That's kind of an awkward setup. This is intended to be uh, lashed in with struts, but we don't have an engineer right now. So this will be fine. We can transmit this science. It's still researching, so we've still got data here. We can go ahead and transmit this, though, because our science is full. So that'll be great. That'll take some time. It may be better if we time warp it. Yeah, this is much better. How are we doing on power? Power is fine. 100%. 498 science added. Excellent. And let's head on over to Minmus next. And we're going to grab our science station that's there. We'll switch to that. That should also be full on data. So we'll get that transmitted as well. We've got basically the same station here. 
Okay. This is interesting that it's doing this. <laughs> okay. Science full. So we'll transmit the science and we will time warp that transmission. 20%, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, done. Okay, so that can go back to researching and we'll head back to the space center. We now know what is on our two science outposts on Moon and Minmus, and we're going to do a combined Moon and Minmus mission. I, I think that's definitely a thing we'll do. I want to check real quick to see if there's any contracts available for either of those. I wasn't looking specifically for them before. <laughs> Plant flag on the moon. Yes, that is something that we want to do since we're going to be there anyway. Everything else, I think, is fine. So we just need to go to Minmus and go to moon. So, yeah, we'll do that combined mission. We have 1,250 science that we could spend, actually, and we should think about doing that. We are getting very close to full on science. And we haven't been remotely everywhere. <laughs> so there's that. We're going to... We need what? Like... How much more science do we need? 3,300 here. So we need 6,300 science at this point, And we have 1,250. So we can grab some of this. We could grab like experimental science, large probes. I'm not too interested in either of these. Kerbidine adapters are probably overkill for what we are going to be doing. Clampatron docking port seniors, multi-point connectors for rocket max size. I mean, sure. Most of this is unnecessary for us, but I think we'll grab the advanced motors for now. And I guess we'll just grab things kind of at random. We're pretty much, we, we've pretty much got everything we want in the tree at this point, and we're just working on filling it in. So that's fine. We'll hop into the VAB here. And we're going to grab our Gilly Lander. Now, we're going to have to make a couple of modifications to it. So we'll open this up, and this is going to be the Lander. Was the last one of these that we flew. So that is absolutely fine. This will have more than enough to do our mission here. But we're not going to want this to be what we bring along. We're going to go into our cargo, and we're going to actually completely empty this for the time being. We don't need any of this for right now. Okay. So what can we bring along that we don't have? We do have an, a Gua BD monitor. We have a Communitron. We have a seismometer in both locations. We do not have an Ionographer. So we're going to need two Ionographers. We shouldn't need an RTG for this at all. But the Ionographers, those require one power each. So we have one spare power in each location currently. We could bring the weather analyzers, even though there's no weather to analyze there. That is something that we could bring, because we don't have that. We have a control station. Uh, we could bring more power, but we don't, I think, need it. I think this is all we need. I'm pretty sure that's it. We just need the ionographer and the weather analyzer. We could bring an RTG along just to be able to power it while we are in the dark side. That is something that we could do. So we're not reliant on the solar panels. And then we can just leave this empty for slightly more efficient thrust to weight. That could be a thing. And who do we want to fly this thing? It doesn't actually matter, but we do need Hadguard. So we're going to bring Hadguard, Bill, and Jebediah. That looks good. And nobody's really going to get XP from this, right? This is uh, just going to be a finalizing mission for Moon and Minmus. So we'll go ahead and save that, and we will launch this. And we're just going to do a nice combined Moon-Minmus mission here. We'll have more than enough Delta V to make this happen. And we'll just get these finished up. So as soon as the uh, game starts responding here, there we go, we can get going on this. We'll throttle up, SAS, SAS engaged, and off we go. We'll go ahead and start tipping on over a little bit. This is feeling a little too much. Let's lock that to prograde now. Okay. And our apoapsis height is right up here, so that is good. 
This is a very aggressive turn here. I'm going to try to pull it up this way a little bit. We've drifted off the 90 degree marker. So let's try that. Yeah, that's more correct. Not quite where I wanted it. So we'll pull it up a little further. And you can see here we're already past 45 degrees. So that's a little spicy. <laughs> we're going to hold attitude here for the moment. I feel like we're getting too much horizontal speed. And not enough vertical. We're not punching through the out the atmosphere fast enough. We're definitely going to get some uh, heating effects up here at this rate. So let's get ourselves some altitude. Our SRBs are going to burn off in 10 seconds. Apoapsis height is now 20 kilometers. This is not very high at all. SRBs are out of here. Cool. Apoapsis height is now 30 kilometers. And we're cruising. We're cruising a lot. <laughs> we're going very fast for this altitude. Apoapsis height is now 40 kilometers. The atmosphere is getting thinner, so that's good. We're now at about 29 kilometers altitude. Apoapsis height is 56. 60. Okay, let's go back to prograde at this time. And we'll park here. In fact, at this point, I would like to head over directly to the horizon. Okay, we're going to chill here. I'm not going to do any burning with this stage. Although, we'll try to flip back to prograde. It's going to be difficult. But it, we've got time before we arrive up here. We'll probably do like a full tumble. That's okay. I'm not too worried about that. And we'll circularize this something along the lines of this. That's like 700 meters per second. Okay. It wants us to start burn in the past, but I think that will change once we actually break Atmo. Should in theory be fine. Emphasis on the in theory. Okay. We're going to bypass this a little bit. No, we're good. We're good. We got there. Okay, we should have started the burn ever so slightly ago, but that's fine. We'll start the burn now. And we should also eventually ditch these guys, these decouplers. We ran into issues with that previously. So I think we're going to hold off on that for the moment. And we'll get ourselves into orbit first. So we're going to physics warp this burn. As we get more horizontal speed here. It was an awkward ascent profile, that's for sure. I've definitely seen less awkward ascents. <laughs> but this should, in theory, be completely fine. Our periapsis is almost out of the negatives. Okay, we'll come out of the physics warp. And we're entering orbital mode. Okay, this is technically dipping slightly back into the atmosphere. You can see it right here. That's not exactly what we want. We're going to try switching to radial out. I'm not sure if we need to go radial in or radial out, but I think radial out is the way to go. Yes. Okay, that's in orbit. Perfect. Definitely awkward. And while we're in this orientation, let's get rid of these guys. I'm going to do this the good old fashioned manual way. Because at this point, I don't trust the staging on it after what happened last time. So we're going to decouple these. And radial out is a fine direction to do that in because we're not planning to burn in that direction. So that is wonderful. At this point, we need to head towards the moon. And sometime around here would probably be the time to do that. Okay. We can maybe get a slightly better moon encounter by going like this. 106 meters per second, or not meters per second, 106 kilometers. Okay, this is good enough. 
will allow this. We'll hop on over to that maneuver node. And we will warp to that maneuver. Excellent. So, 10 minutes until that burn. <laughs> we missed the Badlands again. It's fine. I don't care about the 8 science. That's honestly irrelevant. We're going to get all of the science that we need pretty much from what we have already. We kind of don't need additional science. So, that's fine. We will physics warp as we position for this burn. Okay. And we'll time warp a little bit closer to the burn. 20 seconds. 10 seconds. And let's burn this. Now, we'll physics warp the actual burn, because it's going to be like a two-minute burn. But off we go. Oh, we should uh, remember to extend our solar panels. That usually helps. <laughs> there we go. I was thinking about the alternator on this thing, and then I was like, wait, we don't have power flow. Solar panels. That usually helps. <laughs> Perfect. 300 more meters per second. And we may land with this whole thing on the moon. We'll see. We are going moon first. It might actually be a little bit easier if we were to go Minmus first, but... We're doing moon first. Okay. Get this. Eh, how are we looking? This is close enough. This is absolutely close enough. So we're going to do a quick circularization burn here. Bring this on down. And, of course, we're going to have to figure out where we want to land this. I do want to have our periapsis actually be quite a bit lower than this at, like, 30 kilometers. So something along the lines of this. And then we can lower the apoapsis as needed. Our inclination is wacky, and we may want to end up changing that. That's okay. We've got plenty of delta V. So we will head to the maneuver node. And we will warp. Here we come, moon. So this is planned to be our final landing on moon and Minmus. I'm not planning to go back to these anymore after this. We might still head over to Ike if we really want to grab ourselves a, a little bit more scientific data. That would definitely max out our data. So that would be fine if we wanted to, to do that. But very soon, we're going to transition into the actual goal here, which is, of course... Asteroid capture and mining. So we're going to transition into that very soon. Three, two, one, burn. Okay. It's going to be a bit of a lengthy burn here again, but that's fine. We've got plenty of Delta V here. And that burn will be finishing up in five seconds. Good enough. Okay, so at this point, we want to set this as our target. We can always change our uh, inclination here, and we probably want to do that. So we'll go over here, burn in normal mode, although anti-normal is going to be eventually necessary here because I overshot a little bit. There we go. Something more along the lines of that. Sounds good. We'll align to that. That's only 58 meters per second, and I think we're going to do the landing on this monstrosity. It's going to be exciting, and we're going to have to figure out how we want to move Kerbals around. I don't think they're going to be able to jump this distance on Moon. We can test it. And we'll see. <laughs> so this is going to be about a minute here. And we'll just get this radial burn here. Not radial. We'll get this normal burn here a little bit in two seconds, one second, and now. Okay. Uh, we're just going to try to make our way over towards this node a bit. This is probably close enough. How are we looking? Yeah, that's close enough. Okay, so we're going to be potentially coming in for a landing, like, right here, hypothetically. We would, of course, want to fine-tune this landing a bit, but we'd bring it in something kind of like this. Now, this would be on the dark side. 
So that's a little bit of a concern. We may want to wait actually an orbit or two just to bring this out from the dark side. Is this coming out of the dark side or going into the dark side? I actually don't know which way we're rotating here. Let's give it a bit. So let's warp a uh, an orbit here. Okay, we're going into the dark side. So we would have to warp quite a lot here. It'll be easier to manually warp it. I definitely want to come down in the light side, though, just so it is easier to see. So let's go ahead and warp this a bit. This is always going to be awkward. Yeah, we'll, we'll do this about like so. And... Okay. So we'll take this one more orbit here. Actually, maybe a little further. Because this is just tip, tipping into the... Uh, into the light side here. So yeah, we'll do one more orbit. We'll take it around over here and we will do our burn. Actually, we'll at the periapsis, I want to burn retrograde here and circularize this a bit just so that we have less far to fall. So that'll be fine. We'll physics warp as we turn over to that. And then we will, of course, warp to that burn. So 20 minutes there. And we're definitely going to be landing on this. That's for sure. So the question then becomes, can we get Kerbals up and down this? On Moon. I know we can on Minmus or Gilly. But on Moon? I'm actually unsure. Maybe these parts are light enough to carry them with the pack, but I kind of doubt it. So we'll proceed here, and we'll we'll solve that problem when we get there. I'm not exactly sure how we'll solve it yet, but one second and burn. Okay. That's close enough. No problem there. Next, we're going to come around over here, and right around... Let's see, where are we? Here. Right around here is when we're going to want to do this. Now you can see that uh, we're going to be maybe a little bit off here. Yeah, we're going to be a little off here. So we're going to move it back over here and we're going to burn normal like so. And look to intercept something like this. Now we're going to have to readjust this when we get a little closer. So we're going to come in around nine minutes here. Okay. Okay. We're going to need to readjust this again a little bit. Uh, that was not the direction we wanted. I wanted to just grab when we're moving it and put it about here. Okay. So that's going to be in about two minutes that we start that burn. So we'll just position here and warp towards that a bit. Yeah, this will get us close enough and we'll be able to... Uh, adjust in a bit. So this is going to be a 279 meter per second burn. You can see our target is over here. And let's begin the burn. So we are on our way in and we just want to change where we're going to be hitting, of course. Currently is way off over here. And I want to change it so that our path is passing over where this will be when we get there. We can adjust it when we get a little lower. That'll be fine. But no, this is looking good. I'm reasonably happy with this for right now. We're going to move into surface mode and flip to surface retrograde for the time being. And we're going to need to coast for a bit. So, of course, we're going to need to do quite a bit of braking here. We're going to burn most of this fuel off. Not quite all of it, though, I think, in this landing. So we're going to want to keep it around for taking off again if we can. But I'm going to warp to here for the time being. Just a few seconds in the future. And now we're going to adjust our landing. So we're pulling this in. 
And we may need to burn a little bit normal here as well. Yes, we're going to need to burn a little bit normal here as well. Now back to retrograde. Nice. We'll position it right there for now. And we'll just continue to head on in a bit. You can see we're still overshooting it, and that is by design. I'm not exactly sure where the bullseye is here, but we need to hold off for a moment here. And we're going to warp in a little bit. I don't currently see the bullseye, but we will soon enough. Okay. Let's see, this is retrograde here. So... Yeah, I'm, I'm just burning a little bit here, trying to see the bullseye. Trying to see it move. I think we're too high up still. Which is fine. We'll hold position here for the moment, and we're going to need to change our horizontal speed to zero. Yeah, we're still overshooting it, for sure. I mean, if we land inefficiently enough, we'll have to jettison this. <laughs> that is a potential option. But for the time being, we're just continuing to drift here a bit. We've got some horizontal speed here still, like 10... Well, actually, like 50 meters per second, horizontal. Okay. I still don't see the bullseye here. I could just be blind. That That is a possibility. We're only moving at 16 meters per second horizontally right now. Now 10. Now 2. Now one. Okay, now I think we're moving the other direction. We're just going to flip to retrograde here, and we're going to warp in a bit here and see how this ends up looking. Okay, what is the actual suicide burn countdown here? Like 40 seconds? Okay. This looks reasonable. I do want to flip around this direction. There we go. Actually, a little further. Like, here. Okay. Yeah, I think we're going to be able to burn out this whole stage, and the point will be moot. We'll extend our landing legs. And we're going to begin our burn now. We don't need to be burning exactly right then, but that's fine for the moment. Yeah, this is looking good. I mean, we're still like two kilometers away, but we shouldn't be that far away in theory. And we can adjust our actual landing point later on. We can now see the bullseye here. I'm just going to kill our speed entirely. And this is gone now. So that's wonderful. And we kill our speed entirely. And then we're going to need to head over this direction just a bit. Not quite that way. This way. Ah! Stop it. <laughs> Please stop it. Okay. We're going to head over here. There we go. Now we're going to flip to retrograde and we need to be burning. So we're going to decelerate a bit here. Bring that all on down. And once again, I want to head over this direction a wee bit. Okay. Just hit retrograde. We'll call this good. <laughs> we're like 100 meters away. But let's just kill all of our relative speed here. And we'll just bring it on in. Okay. This is fine. This is close enough. Oof. Chasing that retrograde node is a bit spicy. 
<laughs> but there we go. We've made it, and uh, we did manage to burn off that whole stage, so that is fantastic. We're going to need to get this set up. I think that is something that I will maybe do in the next episode, and then we'll head off to Minmus as well. It is past time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Next episode, we'll get this all set up. We might hop a little bit closer here. I don't know. I think we're fine on Moon, if I'm honest. So I think we'll just set up our base here, and we'll head on over. You can leave your offerings to the Engagement Gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including Casserol, Sigma162, J JJ Gamer, Spartan News, Rose Valentine, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time.